It's way too late to stay up. It's way too late to sleep. It's way too early to go to work. I don't have a job either way. So you'll just have to stay tuned to the Schlock Show Talk Show. Baby, the Schlock Show Talk Show. You can have money, you can have fame. You can have chicks, you can have game. But if you got none of that, there's no one to blame but yourself. So just take a hold and say, what the hell? Schlock show, talk show, everybody's watching it now. And this theme song's so damn long. We almost lost five minutes anyhow. The longest theme song in the world. For the Schlock show, talk show. It's the Schlock Show Talk Show! With special guests, the Mads, Trace Bull, you and Frank Conniff! Without further ado, here's Schlocky for you! Uh, oh no, my first talk show and I blew it already. What am I going to talk about? How am I going to do this? I can't cope. Oh, alright, I'm just going to do the interview. Meister, this is my first episode of my new show, The Schlock Show Talk Show. And what better way to start off a new show than with some amazing celebrity guests? Yes, I have Trace, Bo Yu, and I have Frank Conniff. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. I, I've been Which practicing. Time? Ever since Trace came to visit us at SchlockCon last year, I've been practicing his last name to make sure I got it correct. But he and Frank are here, they're the Mads, and you might recognize them from many different shows, Mystery Science Theater 3000, Cinematic Titanic, the short The Frank, which I'm going to try to find on Amazon, yes. it's a musical yes. short that you guys put together, and uh, they were here in Cleveland, Ohio today to put together a workshop of, for writers, and also two different nights of riffing. Uh, who decided on the movies for the riffing? Uh, it was a mutual decision. Okay. Uh, uh, I, you had a theme this weekend. You had an Ed Wood theme. Yeah, it was based on the fact that they're public domain. So oh, yeah, there you go. That's always a good, good way to start. Uh, last night you did uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yes. And tonight, Glenn or Glenda, yeah. the audience went wild. I heard that you had to switch the movies up because you had an 11-year-old in the audience yesterday. Well, we, we tried to be a little sensitive to the themes of the film, and one was more space-oriented. And, and the other one was more uh, transitional. <laughs> yes, exactly. So. And that's a that's in the topic in today's news. Actually, we were talking about how this show, this movie, was very revolutionary in its time for being very, uh, you know, uh, uh, forgiving and, and it welcoming. Was a film about about having yes. compassion for transvestites. Exactly. Uh, for I did 1953. Wanna, that's right. I know. 1953. That was a yeah. long time ago. That was probably before all of our times. Uh, real quick, I wanted to ask you guys if anybody from any of the movies you've ever riffed have come up to you, uh, any filmmakers or actors, and uh, been upset or been happy or thanked you? Or We've met a lot of people from the films that we've done, and they've all been very gracious. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. And uh, one more quick question. When you're going to see a real movie, like one of today's movies in a theater, if you get time to do that, do you ever have the urge to fight the urge to throw out funny no, lines? No, If it's a good movie, uh, there's no comments to be made. If it's a bad one, we leave. <laughs> well, and if it's a bad movie too, you know, you're in a theater where there are other people who paid to see it, so you have to be respectful of that maybe they are, they want to hear everything. Yeah. So we don't, you know, we don't we encourage people to talk during a movie in a public place. That's wrong to do. You know, at home with your friends, yeah, have at it. But we, uh, some people think that we would we would. Uh, condone talking during movies and movie theaters. We absolutely do not. Yeah, I was telling somebody that when I was in grade school, I got in trouble uh-huh. for throwing out jokes at the wrong time. I had to go write my name on the board, yeah. stay after class. Uh-huh. I slowly learned when 
to throw out funny uh, comments. Did you guys uh, have that same experience? Yeah, we all uh, were wisecrackers growing yeah. up. And, and we class all had, clown. We all that was the start of my comedy career, was just being <laughs> a wise ass. I wrote for the class clown. But was Very class good. Class. So you were actually making some residuals off of it. I hope so. Very nice. And then I know you did stand up in Minneapolis together. That's where you guys kind of met each other. Uh, over all these years, you're good buddies, best friends, road trip uh, yeah, partners. Absolutely. We like the same uh, food, so it's a very compatible uh, relationship. Yes. <laughs> That's very good. It's all based around um, meals. Really? Yes. yes. Where to pick the meal. That was one of your uh, secrets at the writing workshop was yes. if all the writers could pick the same restaurant, you know that you'll work well together. Right? Yes. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you guys for coming to Cleveland. Thank I really you. appreciate you thank being you. on my first thank show, so much. the Schlock Glad Show Talk thank Show, you. trademarked. And uh, we'll see you guys next time you come to Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, we're awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Cleveland. <laughs>